For at TV, the world is thinking. Right now, the demand curve in China for energy, which you see is flat, which means we've given China full credit for the uh, five-year, 20% efficiency across all industry goal. We've given China full credit for efficiency. Nonetheless, the energy demand curve, business as usual, goes like that. What's not well discussed or well understood or well known is that coal, which drives China, is undergoing what we call a peak coal experience, meaning that by the year 2030, plus or minus three years or so, or maybe, maybe a little bit more, the amount of, of coal that China has, <clears throat> minus what it uses, plus what it discovers, will peak. We've just been through peak oil. We know what happens to price volatility in that environment. Now, let's lay on top of this, and by the way, these the next data are preliminary. Let's lay on top of it all other forms of supply. So we're going to compare supply and demand. Here they are. Oil, natural gas, all the fossils, oil, natural gas, the nuclear, which is a big emphasis in China, as you know, and then all of the renewables, wind, solar, biomass, et cetera, and hydro, et cetera. And you notice that the total supply, even though it's expanding rapidly, still leaves a, sub a substantial deficit in China. An energy-driven deficit means it's an energy-driven recession. The fundamental contract that the government has in China, as we all understand it, is that we supply continued economic well-being on a per capita basis, and the people give us their loyalty and their, and their obedience, more or less. I apologize for abstracting that so, so, so much. But that's the idea. The idea is our job as government is to provide increased well-being, and we're not going to be able to do it with an energy-driven recession. And that's a recession. And that recession will come if we don't solve the problem. Question, how do you solve it? You either increase the supply of energy, and some of us theorists think, and practitioners think, that it's going to be very hard to exceed these, nu these numbers. It's going to be very hard to create more supply. The obvious other place to look is to reduce the demand. And one has to reduce the demand in the three major sectors of the built environment, manufacturing, and by manufacturing, we mean both the style of manufacturing, what it, how we manufacture, the processes, the technical processes, and also the mix of what it is we're manufacturing and exporting, and transportation. If we hit net zero energy, a very difficult goal for any country, including China, although China is you know, reasonably well equipped to begin prosecuting standards. If we hit that, we might be able to decrease the deficit and the energy-driven recession that we see coming for China uh, by maybe 30, 40, or maybe as much as 45 percent. A big deal. A very big deal. And that's what we have in mind uh, for China, and that's why we're promoting net zero.